Hello, good afternoon, my trade fam. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We are live for Wink. This is what investors need to know about things in the market. Thank you so much for joining us again this afternoon. And I am so happy to be back here for another episode of Wink. I think the last Wink we had was a couple of months ago pa. But before we start, if this is your first time joining us here, please don't forget to allow StreamYard to see your name so that when you do put in your comments later on, we will be able to address you properly. This event, Wink, this aims to be able to provide an avenue for our clients and investors alike to get to know the top companies in the market. And um, right now, what we have, who we have in store for you today is Alter Energy. They are doing an IPO recently, and we will be hearing more about them later on this afternoon. And you will get to ask questions directly to their co-founders and chairmen. So, excited ba kayo para doon? Ako, excited ako. I have my questions of my own as well. But uh, let us just see uh, if our audience are coming in already. Please. Don't forget and don't be shy. Uh, just comment where you're watching us from. But before we start, uh, let me just remind you guys that this uh, event is not a solicitation of purchasing shares, but more on informational avenue siya for you guys to get to know more about the companies that we will be talking to for today. So... All right, so let me just see if we have any comments here now. All right, so okay, this is a reminder, guys, that you have to put in your registration sa StreamYard so we can see your name para we can address you properly. Ayan, Gurkandi Hermino, uh, he's watching from Paco. Uh, katatapos lang kasi ng market, so I guess some of you are still you know, shaking your hands and relaxing a little bit before tuning in today. That's okay. We will be having the full hour for the presentation of Alter Energy. So the whole afternoon, you'll get to know them better. All right. So let me introduce first our speakers so that you will get to know them better already. Uh, here I have Mr. Vince Perez. He is the founder and current chairman of Alter Energy. He was Philippine Energy Secretary from June 2001 to March 2005. He promoted clean indigenous energy and crafted a 10-year renewable energy policy framework. He played a key role in President Arroyo's economic diplomacy by forging strategic energy partnerships with several Asian countries, the UK and the USA. He also served briefly in the early 2001s as Undersecretary at the Department of Trade and Industry. He had 17 years experience in debt restructuring, capital markets, and private equity in emerging markets. Hello, Sir Vince Perez. Good afternoon. It's nice to have you here. Good afternoon, Cadiz. I'm so glad to be here to talk to everyone. I've been, I've been a big client of Abacus Securities. Paul Su is a good friend of mine. So. Happy to talk to your clients here. Thank you, Cadiz. Thank you, Sir Vince. But I know you're not alone in doing this talk this afternoon. So let me also call in Mr. Jerry Magbanwa. Mr. Jerry Magbanwa is a co-founder as well and president of Alter Energy Holdings Corporation. Prior to joining Alter Energy in 2007, Jerry spent nine years with Intergen. This is a leading global greenfield power developer with plants in Australia, Mexico, Netherlands, Philippines, Singapore, and the UK. Jerry worked as commercial manager for Intergen in the Philippines for four years, and he is responsible for financial modeling and planning, asset management, and contracts management. Thank you so much for joining us today as well, Sir Jerry. Thank you, Candice. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, again, my name is Jerry, Jerry McBanwa, President of Alternergy. So I'm glad to join you in this uh, forum today, this afternoon. Thank you so much, Sir Vincent and Sir Jerry. So 
we i'm sure our clients are all excited to hear what you have to say so i won't be keeping you anymore you can start your presentation you guys have the floor thank you so much thank you well what are we all about what is alternity who are we we'll just walk you through very briefly of course we have this disclaimer here let me just explain the ipo that we were just going through uh, it's a alternative holdings. Uh, we're offering 1.15 billion shares. That's about 32% uh, of the company, all primary shares. We're not selling any shares today. We believe the upside is still there. And that is about um, 1.4 billion pesos worth. There will be a stabilization fund, of course. Um, that's why we're offering an over uh, option to ensure that the uh, stock price remains stable for the first 30 days the use of proceeds is to go to the company to build and fund our solar and hydro projects pay some uh, uh, liabilities of the acquisition of our um, well-performing solar project kirohan do some uh, pre-development expenses of our hydro wind and offshore wind projects as part of our pipeline and to operationalize our retail electricity supply company so we could sell to the contestable customers who are looking for renewable power right now we just got orders from all the trading participants uh, a few hours ago on at 11 a.m you still have time to participate and submit orders if you wish um until march 17 <clears throat> and on march 24 next friday we will be the first ipo of 2023 once again the pioneer in this case a pioneer in ipo for this year let's just walk you through who we who are we and what are we all about well we're one of the pioneers in renewable energy in the philippines we started in 2008 <coughs> And we're really one of the leading renewable energy firms in the country. We have a very unique portfolio, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We have a diversified triple play portfolio. We are in wind. We were the pioneers in wind. We are in solar, runoff river, hydro, and battery storage. And hopefully in the next few years, the next frontier, we will also be in offshore wind. We have about 70 megawatts operating at the moment, 72 megawatts under construction and 1.2 gigawatt or 1,200 megawatt as part of our project pipeline that we will be offering to you. This is the lineup of the very deep bench of the management team. Myself on the left, you have Jerry uh, next to me and our co-founder, Knut Hedegger. The three of us were part of the first ever North Wind Bangi Bay Wind Project in all of Southeast Asia. We have Eduardo Miranda here, a seasoned banker who has taken many companies public himself when he was with PCI Bank. Mike Bichtenfeld moved to the Philippines 10 years ago after setting up multiple solar farms in um, Western Australia, USA. And uh, Ina Ariola is our vice president, general counsel, and she has had a long history with First Gen, taking First Gen public and Annette Rafael, uh, a former assistant secretary at the Department of Energy, DNR, DILG, and DND. So here you have um, three bankers, two people with government experience, one lawyer, one CPA, two engineers, very complementary expertise. We've been working together for 15 years. Who are we? We're developers. What does a developer mean? We start from scratch. We start developing a project as if it was just a piece of paper and bring it all the way to operational uh, period. We also know, since most of our projects require funding by, by lenders, we consider our lending banks as our partners. And today, we've been able to, thanks to our track record and our reputation, been able to attract 13 billion pesos of funding uh, since we began. And thirdly, which is very unique, you won't read this in our annual reports or in our financial statements. This is our intangible asset. Given our government background, we are very proactive in our renewable policy discussions with the regulators, with the ERC, the DOE, 
uh, NGCP, and this is allows us to be on the cutting edge, on the forefront of uh, policies that are currently being discussed that will benefit renewable energy. We have what we call a quadruple bottom line philosophy, uh, profitability, carbon reduction in terms of reducing uh, carbon emissions, benefits to the community that we live in, and employment of the fulfillment of our employees. But really, most important, we pay attention to whether we make money, profitability. And we measure that with what we call annual cash flow or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, EBITDA. We are all driven here to produce cash flow so we can service dividends to our shareholders and debt service to our lenders. Why are we called as the pioneers? Well, we really set up what we call precedent setting wind solar runoff river projects in this country. Three of us were part of the pioneering wind project in all of South Asia, the Bunky Bay Wind Farm in Ilocos Norte. We worked hand in hand then with then Governor Bongbong Marcos, now the president, and we learned a lot from that experience. Following that, we set up Alternergy, and thanks to our track record, we got multiple wind service contracts from the DOE to explore and hopefully tap wind other potential wind farms in Luzon and Mindoro. And one of them turned out to be very commercially viable the Pililla Rizal wind farm, only 40 kilometers from Metro Manila. And with that, we were able to tap an all Filipino banking syndicate, RCBC, BDO, China Bank, finance this project and even won an award. We also work hand in hand with the Energy Regulatory Commission to educate them how to review and approve a solar contract in the Philippines. And we were there for the first solar contract ever approved by the ERC to sell electricity from solar energy to the Cagayan Electric Power in Northern Mindanao. As we speak, we are also building and soon to complete by May of this year, the first and largest battery energy storage in the Western Pacific, our first venture outside the Philippines. Just a few pictures to show you. Mentioned here is the Bungie Bay, which three of us were involved in. This was the inaugurations uh, held in Ilocos Norte then, and a few years later, we were part of the Senate hearings in the formation of the Renewable Energy Act. Here I am invited to be in the ceremonial table in the signing ceremony in December 2008. After that, then Energy Secretary Angelo Reyes awarded us with multiple wind service contracts to develop wind projects in the Philippines. And thanks to a grant from the Asian Development Bank and the government of Japan, they funded us to set up multiple towers to measure wind. And one of which turned out to be very promising in Pililla Rizal overlooking Laguna Lake, which was financed by three banks. And we got an award from the IFC, the World Bank Private Arm uh, Affiliate for our Innovative Sustainable Finance. Now our second area beyond wind is Ronald River Hydro. And one of our partners, Knut Hedegaard, on his own, together with Julia Storm, who are both shareholders of Alternergy, developed a small run of river hydro in Nueva Vizcaya. Learning from that experience, we decided to roll out our own run of river portfolio in Northern Luzon, and we received a very attractive financing from a development institution based in Singapore, funded by three governments of Australia, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. And here we are signing an an agreement with the Dumagats, the indigenous people of the Sierra Madre in Nueva Ecija, and we were welcomed by the municipality of Kiangan in Fugao. And all of these hydro projects we have are financed by the Developed Bank, Bank of the Philippines. Moving on from wind and hydro, we had Mike Lichtenfeld who moved from the US to the Philippines in 2013, and we signed our first deal with the Cagayan Electric Power in Northern Mindanao. That led to the construction of the very first and the then largest solar farm in the country, the Kirohon Solar Farm. Later, we set up eight out of 12 large commercial mall solar rooftops over city malls in Luzon, besides in Mindanao. And as we speak, we're almost finished in completing our first solar battery project, our first project overseas in the Republic of Palau. Uh, let me walk you through now 
this unique triple play portfolio that makes us unique from the other renewable energy stocks that you have seen recently. One, we are focused on the Philippines. We are not trying to be a master of the entire region of Southeast Asia. We believe that the Philippines, we know well, it's like our backyard. We know it like the back of our, the palm of our hand. And there you see our multiple sites, whether it's in sonar or wind, run of river hydro, and even our offshore wind in some parts of Visayas. Except, of course, we have this first ever project outside the country in Palau. We have 29 service contracts plus Palau, a total of 30 projects, all in our portfolio. Now, this is an important slide that I want to slow down and explain to you. Why do we say we have a triple play? These are the three lines, the three charts of the monthly production of electricity of a run of river hydro project, the one in green, of a wind farm in blue, and a solar farm in orange. Uh, let's start with the run of river hydro. The production per month increases in the beginning of the rainy months in July, all the way through the neighbor month, and finally around December, year end, at the beginning of the calendar year, um, the monthly production of hydro subsides. For wind, however, once the Amihan starts blowing in October, it starts picking up in terms of production all the way to the bear months, in the early cold months of January, February, and finally settles down in the hot months of the summer. Meanwhile, a solar farm pretty much has a steady production all year round, but tends to peak in the very hot months of March and April. But by combining these three seasonalities, this is really our tactical advantage over single resource companies. By combining the wind, the solar, and the hydro seasonalities, we can produce steady cash flow to give dividends to our shareholders like yourself or debt service to our lenders. Now let's look at how it looks like on a daily profile. In, within a day, the orange parabola is what a solar farm production would look like. Starting at five or six in the morning, solar generation start increasing, peaking around 10 a.m. to around 2 p.m. and slowly subsides as the sun sets by five or six in the evening. Meanwhile, a wind farm during the day really starts producing as the sun rises, as you could see, and as it gets even beyond sunset, wind power continues to blow in the very critical second peak of power demand in the day. This is the first peak of a daily profile of power requirements, and this is the second peak. And this is important because this is when students come home to study, uh, workers come home to rest, households are cooking, they're watching TV, they're relaxing, and wind power production during the day continues to provide electricity during the second peak. The run of river hydro pretty much is steady all day long. But again, by combining these three daily profiles, wind, solar, and hydro, we can theoretically provide 24-hour clean energy supply to what we call the green option customers. These are customers who have chosen to only procure green electricity some malls, some hotels, some BPO buildings, some steel mills, some cement plants, all are starting to want only to use clean energy. Not only because they're clean for the environment, but because they are cheaper than regular fossil fuel electricity. Another reason we have this triple play portfolio strategy is because land Availability is becoming an increasing challenge for any infrastructure project. An airport will require a lot of land. A toll road will require right of way. And a renewable power company or any power plant for that matter. And in this slide, we have shown you that for a solar farm that theoretically produces 150 gigawatt hours or 150,000 kilowatt hours a year, it will require as much as 100 hectares of otherwise productive land. But a wind farm for the same amount of output will only require 15 hectares. 
So by combining our triple play of solar and wind and run of river hydro, we can mitigate land availability as we roll out our portfolio of renewable projects. One of the things that makes it a little bit unique with renewable energy is that they don't produce all day, all every hour of the year. In this case, a solar farm only produces 17, 18% of all the hours in a year. A wind farm produces wind power approximately one third of all the hours in a year, while a run of river hydro can produce about fifth, half of the hours in a year from uh, hydroelectricity. So therefore, when we talk about megawatts, it's very hard to compare megawatts of solar, of wind, and hydro. And later, when Jerry explains to you our growth story, we will focus on gigawatt hour or kilowatt hour, which is the unit of electricity that we produce, that we earn our revenues. I'm going to walk you through very quickly now in each of the projects we have. This is all the projects that any investor will have a piece of the portfolio. The Tirohon Wind Farm that's producing since 2015, our very popular tourist destination in Pililla Rizal, the wind farm. These are just four pictures out of the eight large solar rooftops that we have all over the zone besides Mindanao. All three of these, is, all of these has been operating uh, since 2015, very profitability, profitably. And then as we speak, we have two projects that will come on stream next year, or sorry, this year in 2023. Our Palau project should be done by middle of May. It's near completion, while our Hermana, Hermosa Bataan solar farm, which is only 300 meters behind the substation of NGCP, we will break ground. Part of the IPO proceeds we will earn later next week will be used to jumpstart this project and will be ready by early next year. Beyond these two, we are also constructing two runoff river projects. One began constructing in 2021. This is the Tupiga Mini Hydro in Neva Vizcaya, Neva Isiya. And another one in Kiangan, Ifugao, which we began construction also two years ago, which should come on stream by early 2025. And we also have a third project, which will use the proceeds from the IPO to jumpstart this, constructing at the end of the year and finishing by 2025. So we have our solar projects, under construction, we have our hydro projects under construction, and yet our biggest portfolio are wind farms. Sembrano is a mountain in Pililla Rizal. It is actually what we call phase two of our existing Pililla Rizal wind farm. We know the wind is there. We have all the licenses and permits ready. By next quarter, the second part of this year, we will break down to build this wind farm, and we already have signed a buyer for this electricity from a retail electricity supply company in Luzon. Following Sembrano, we chose a location right beside Pililla Rizal in the municipality of Tanay. We already know that the wind resource in Pililla is already proven, and therefore we chose Tanay because it's just adjacent to Pililla. We will build a 100 megawatts wind farm, and we have already measured the wind, it's proven we've gotten our land rights from one single landowner. And more importantly, we've gotten our height clearance from the Civil Aviation Authority that will allow us to install up to 16 turbines of six megawatts each. Lastly, we're finally gonna move outside the province of Rizal into an Alabat Island in Quezon province. Why? Why there? Well, it's facing the prevailing strong northeast monsoon wind from the Pacific Ocean, what we call Amihan. And we are very excited. We already started installing a met mass last October. And this is something that we will wrap up with our wind portfolio in the next few years. But even with all these operating plants, the solar plants under construction, the hydro plants under construction, the wind farms that are about to begin, we will wrap up and round off our portfolio with what we call the projects for the next frontier, offshore wind. We have gotten from the DOE two major service contracts, the windswept Calabite passage between Mindoro and Bataan, and the other windy passage between Tablas and Boracay in Panay. These two 
could be as much as a thousand megawatts. And more importantly, we have signed an agreement with a global energy company, Shell, that approached us 18 months ago. And we signed this in November, where we will co-develop with them this mega infrastructure project, which is a priority of the current BBM administration. This chart is very important for you to visualize because this is the company that's going to be listed next Friday, Alternative Holdings Corporation, and it owns all these companies. The companies in blue are the wind projects, companies in green are the hydro projects, and the boxes in orange are the solar projects. And this dark red company is the licensed retail electricity supply company called Jesse Green Energy Supply Solutions, which will tap and combine the wind, the hydro, and solar that we could sell to the contestable customer. You buy a piece of the outer stock. You are actually owning a piece of this portfolio. All of this have been vetted by three law firms. All have been reviewed by the SEC, the Philippine Stock Exchange. All of these are real projects with permits and service contracts. And as a matter of fact, before we took this IPO, we cleaned this up because we had three dormant companies that are no longer operational. We took it out and took a non-cash loss to clean up the balance sheet so that when you come in as a stockholder of Alter, you don't have to have a piece of four uh, dormant companies. This is the portfolio that you will be a fellow co-shareholder when you buy an Alter stock. Let me now pass you on to Jerry, Jerry Bangbanwa, to talk about the key investment highlights of Alternity. Jerry? Thank you, Vince. So let me walk you through why invest uh, with a Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, Tess. Hello, Tess. Just want to check my audio. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Let's do this again. So um, let me walk you through again uh, the, on the reasons why one should invest with Alternergy. So as Vince mentioned earlier, Alternergy has a robust development pipeline of renewable energy pro projects. For some of them, we have secured long-term agreements. For the others, we expect to pursue bilateral discussions uh, with different off-takers. Over the years, we've established operational track record and to overcome the myriad of challenges in project development, we have been able to cultivate synergies with different partners uh, over the years. We have also been able to raise debt capital, uh, having raised a total of 13.2 billion over the last 12 years. As pioneers, Alturgy is well positioned to leverage on the growth of renewable energy which is currently supported by a very favorable re regulatory environment. Alturgy has a management team with industry leading experience, be it in government, in government policy, finance, accounting, taxation, business development, and project management. Alturgy is also committed to a sustainable future for the next generation. Allow me to walk you through some of the details of these key investment highlights. First, our project pipeline. So 
between you can see on the slide between 2015 to 2019 these are the projects that we already brought into commercial operations but in 20, between 2023 to 2026 these are the nine projects that Vince mentioned a while ago that we expect to bring into commercial operations such that by 2026 the group will have will be producing an annual production of renewable energy of up to 1.1 billion kilowatt hours so what does that mean uh, for us? 1.1 uh, billion kilowatt hours is enough renewable energy that will be, that can supply half a million households. That is the equivalent number of households in the city of Manila. And based on our current pipeline, um, most of that will come from wind. These are the reputable institutions uh, that handled our uh, offtake arrangements. So for one, uh, on the upper left, this is the contract with Transco for the Pililia project, which had a base tariff of 740, but now the adjustment adjusted rate is at 865 pesos per kilowatt hour. We also have a contract with Palau Public Utilities Corporation, which is denominated in US dollars, which is perfectly hedged with the OPEX and CAPEX, as well as the debt servicing of that project. We have a contract with City Mall for our rooftop portfolio, which is a very attractive tariff that is linked to these distribution rates. Current rates we have on that on this uh, portfolio projects ranging from 12 to 14 pesos per kilowatt hour. On the other hand, we have a contract with Sepalco for the Kiron project, which had a tariff uh, base tariff of 875 pesos per kilowatt hour. Today, uh, the adjusted rate is at 10 pesos and 36 centavos per kilowatt hour. Early last year, uh, we were able to uh, sign up two additional PSAs for the project. Uh, that is with the Pinelco, pro Pinelco um, and uh, the Dupinga project. Early this year in February, uh, we were able to sign up an investment agreement with NIECO. As part of our strategy, uh, that we invite our host DU to be a member or to, to participate in our equity formation of the project. So we did that in February of this year. Here we have, over the last several years, uh, we were able to cultivate partnerships with world-class industry players. On the upper left, these are the local banks who have helped us uh, in our various projects. BDO, uh, RCBC, and China Bank help us on our wind project. On the other hand, we have DBP, who is supporting us on all our hydro uh, run the river hydro projects. Um, RCBC and Export Finance Australia have helped us in our uh, solar uh, portfolios. On the upper right, these are the equity partners on our various projects. So we have Vina Energy for the for the wind Pililia project and Sembrano. Norfund, which is a unit of the so Sovereign Wealth Fund of Norway, is our partner in the Kiangan project together with Renova and uh, Renova, which is a publicly listed uh, in Japan, publicly listed company in Japan, together with Santa Clara. Uh, for solar, we have partnered with the Sand Foundation from the United States, uh, together with Minergy. On the bottom left, uh, these are the world-renowned technical advisors that, that we work with uh, to make sure that uh, our projects are properly vetted. Um, and then we also use top-tier contractors. Uh, for wind, uh, we use Vestas and Siemens Gamesa, uh, with, while Santa Clara providing the civil works. Uh, on um, solar, we've used UV as EPC contractor, which is supported by First Solar uh, for the supply of panels, SMA for the inverters, and SAFT uh, of France for uh, the battery supply. Lastly, we have Googler there uh, supplying our turbines for our uh, Run of River Hydro projects. As we mentioned earlier, uh, over the last 12 years, we've been able to raise a total of 13.2 billion uh, pesos of debt financing. I will not go into the details of these transactions, but what it allowed us to do is to narrow down the credit spreads for our projects uh, recently from as high as 300 basis points to 100 basis points. It also allowed us to increase the tenor of our financing from 12 and a half years to 17 years. The renewable energy sector is indeed supported by a very favorable regulatory environment. For instance, uh, we still have the income tax, income tax holiday for seven years, the 0% VAT uh, on purchase of local goods and services, 
as well as 0% VAT on the sale of renewable energy power. The National Renewable Energy Program has been updated with a goal of reaching 50% share in the power mix by 2040. We still have the feed-in tariff scheme, which last year was increased by another 100 megawatts for the Rano River Hydro projects. To encourage uh, the, the invest, uh, developers to uh, build more projects, we have the Green Energy Auction Program, uh, which was started off last year by the DOE, and this is expected to be continued uh, on an annual basis. On the other hand, we still have the Renewable Portfolio Standard, which was also increased from 1% to 2.5% last year uh, by the DOE. This, this means that there will be an additional demand for RE power of up to 2.65 million megawatt hours per year, which if it comes from solar, it's equivalent to 1,500 megawatts of solar. From wind, 1,000 megawatts. If it comes from hydro, equivalent to 600 megawatts. Soltergy currently has uh, seven directors, and we're joined by two independent directors. Uh, they are Teresa Marshall and Greg Domingo. Teresa Marshall is the CEO of BPI Asset Management, formerly the CFO and Chief Sustainability Officer of BPI. Greg Domingo is the former Trade Industry Secretary and Executive Director of SM Investments. To measure our performance on sustainability, these are the metrics that, that we have uh, used. The number of trees we planted to date, a total of 55,000 trees, 280,000 households that we have served with green electricity, 360,000 visitors visiting our Pililia wind farm, a total of 139,000 tons of carbon, em carbon emissions reduced, which is equivalent to 6,000 jeepneys applying our roads. To date, we have a total of 37 barangays hosting our various projects. Allow me to walk you through some of our key uh, financial highlights. So we use uh, EBITDA margin, uh, debt service coverage ratio uh, to, to measure this uh, key performance. So EBITDA margin, we we had 82% uh, uh, reach in 2021 with a DSCR of 1.2 times. As for our income statement in 2021, we, have, uh, we had a total of net income of 159 million and adjusted EBITDA of 271 million. Allow me to just explain uh, or elaborate on that line item under other income charges under the column uh, six months and then June 30, 2022. That negative amount is largely influenced by a one-time non-cash restructuring charge of 173 million. Uh, these are the four dormant entities that Vince mentioned uh, a while ago. Um, in preparation for this IPO. And we don't expect to incur that same nature of cost uh, going forward. As for our balance sheet, uh, we have consolidated cash and cash equivalents of 800 million uh, as of September 30, 2022, with total assets of 3.8 billion and total equity of a billion pesos. As a growth company, you will see our cash flows are dominated primarily by investing activities and financing activities. We expect cash flows from operating activities to increase in the next two to three years as we roll out our projects. In terms of use of proceeds, we're allocating a total of 564 million for two shovel ready projects. Uh, the Solana Solar Project with 250 million and Lamut Rana River Hydro Project for 314 million. They, this equity participation will allow us to uh, maintain control over these two projects. In addition, we also allocated 522 million for the payment of uh, accrued liabilities for the acquisition of the Kirahon Solar. Such acquisition allowed us to gain control of that project as well as to have access to cash flows that has been uh, produced by this project uh, consistently over, the, over since 2015. We're also allocating 155 million for pre-development expenses uh, for the Ibulao project, the Tanai project, the Ib Alabat project, as well as the offshore wind projects. Finally, we have working capital uh, to operationalize our retail electricity supply business with 30 million and that will round up a total of 1.4 billion in terms of net proceeds. With that, uh, allow me to pass you on to Vince uh, for the final summary. Vince?
Thank you, Jerry. So now let's talk about a summary of why we feel Alternergy, our outer stock, is a unique investment opportunity. And I will follow a guide that a very sophisticated, smart market guru here in Manila taught me that there are several P's to look into when you're looking to invest in a particular stock for the Philippine Stock Exchange. The first P is people. Who are the management team behind that company? Well, for us at Alternergy, you have a deep bench management team. We're about 50 team members here. And we've been working together for 15 years. In wind, but also in solar and run of river hydro. We chose ourselves because we believe we complement each other. We have different backgrounds. As I mentioned, several engineers here in the team, lawyers, accountants, finance, former bankers, geodetic engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. And on top of that, some of us have had government experience and collectively, we believe we have an unsurpassed senior level relationships within the energy sector. That is important because power or energy in the Philippines is highly regulated and working with the regulators and getting permits is a special cutting edge that anyone should have. So we're not a single entrepreneur all by itself. We're not a subsidiary of a large construction company or a large conglomerate. We are very focused in developing renewable power. Second P, what is the product that Alternergy offers? Well, we are a unique triple play portfolio of clean energy, of wind, solar, hydro, and battery storage. And in the next few years, we will be entering the next frontier of renewable energy, offshore wind. That is the upside. And this is probably one of the last remaining portfolios of renewable projects under one entity. The product not only makes money, not only brings clean environment to the country, but also provides much needed electricity supply in a country that's growing rapidly. We're currently experiencing certain shortfalls in power supply because the Malampaya gas field will soon be depleted. And that would mean 3,000 megawatts of gas powered plants will come on stream and will have to be replaced by additional capacity. The third P of investing in a stock is what potential that that company provides. Well, for Alternergy, we already have set and put together a clearly defined project pipeline. All of this are already in the company. There's no funny business going on where we have some projects outside that we will inject later. As we showed you in the table, there are about 29 service contracts plus the one in Palau, all under Alternative Holdings Corporation. One, if I may quote, won't mention his name, one veteran power executive said that we have put together a respectable and high quality portfolio of renewable power projects. And the growth is in the pipeline that we just showed you. Projects under construction, coming on stream in 23, coming on stream in 24, and 25, and 26. That is the potential, that is the growth. This particular stock is a capital appreciation play. The fourth P is predictability. Our projects are fully contracted. None are selling currently in the wholesale electricity spot market. It's well designed. Why? Because we have to borrow from lenders and they, in order before they lend, 
They want to make sure that our equipment are top tier, that the design of the plant is well thought out, and therefore they bring in third party technical partners from Australia and Singapore and France and uh, Europe, who then double check and triple check whether our project design is well suited, well thought of, that the bank can lend to. And therefore, these projects are of high quality and they will be earning year after year renewable power electricity. And to roll this out, we have proven that we have access to competitive financing. Remember, some of us here in the team are former bankers. And because of our pure, pure play renewable, we've been able to receive and obtain soft loans, even grants, from agencies that support our sustainability efforts. If you want to add another P, the fact that we're pioneer, and that makes us unique, because we already know We've learned lessons from the past, how to navigate the very difficult, complex way of getting permits in this country. With high oil and coal prices and with high inflation that we're all talking about, we all know that inflation today is brought about from two factors. One is food. We could talk about that separately. And the other one is the fact that power rates have come up. But because renewable energy the projects that we could offer to electric co-ops and distribution utilities, we could offer them a fixed price for 10 years, or 15 years, even 20 years. And by being able to offer them a fixed price lower than the current market price for power now, renewable energy really is a way of fighting inflation. And as somebody once said to us, rather than just paying his power rates with his electrical bill, he'd rather be an investor so he could be a part of this energy sector. Finally, why are we going public? Two reasons. One, by being public, we're able to tap what we call the green bond market that we could tap from insurance companies or pension funds that then only buy bonds from publicly listed companies like Alternity. But two, we also believe firmly that Filipino families, young professionals, wealthy grandparents and parents should be able to have a piece of what we call this green capitalism, this green revolution. And everyone here in the company is a subscribing to the IPO. My IT manager here is disappointed that he wasn't able to get what he wanted, but we hope that all of us being shareholders will show you that we are aligned in making sure that the outer stock will continue to outperform. So with that, we believe that now more than ever, once we list on March 24, investing in renewable power Investing in alternative will be a compelling imperative for each one of you. Thank you and good day. All right. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Sir Vince and Sir Jerry. I really liked what you said, Sir Vince, especially in the part where you were highlighting your deep benchmark, uh, deep bench management team because I really think that um, the leadership team in the company will dictate how the performance of the company will go in the future. And I, I can see that you've really invested in good leaders. So we hope that uh, it will come into fruition moving forward. But for me, sir, this is the Q&A time already. This is the part where all of our clients have been waiting for. Uh, but I have a personal question, uh, if you don't mind, sir, to answer. No. Um, knowing that Alternergy is coming into this IPO with competitors already, how do you feel about having that kind of environment? Because you guys were the pioneers. 
but now you are coming into the IPO with other companies who already ventured into being listed before you. How do you feel about that? Thank you, Cadiz. One, of course, for the sake of the environment, for the sake of our power sector, the more RE companies come in, the better. Now, how are we different from other renewable energy companies? Well, one, of course, we mentioned we're the pioneer. So we believe we have a little bit of edge in getting a power project up and running. I'll give you one little example. If you are going to build a wind farm, you're going to need high clearance from what is known as the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, CA. Well, some folks tried to build a wind farm in the north, did not know that they needed high clearance, and was uh, stopped mid-development because they were near a airport. So therefore, knowing these little things, knowing these little nuances, is a major difference for being a pioneer. We could go on and on and give you examples. The second one is very obvious. We are a triple play. We're not a single play like solar. So therefore, the fact that we are diversified in wind, solar, and hydro, we can adjust and shift to different seasonalities in a year, different profiles in the day, and believe it or not, shifting of the climate change between El Nino and La Nina. Now is March. It's supposed to be really hot, but it's not. We actually had a little drizzle yesterday. So if we had only had solar, for instance, the solar farm in March would be underperforming relative to the average for the last 20 years. But our hydro will benefit from a wet year. Now, we'll have uh, El Nino someday, of course. And that means El Nino means good for a solar and actually even good for a win. So by having a diversified portfolio, we diversify and reduce the risk. Another advantage of unique to us is that we're very focused. We're not a subsidiary of a large company where we were an extension of another product. We are only focused on building renewable power projects. None of us are also um, uh, in, uh, busy with other industries. We are very focused in that sense. And we're all shareholders in this company. So you know that we're not just some hard professionals. We are all shareholders, big or small, and therefore it's in our interest to generate the cash flow that we have. And I think um, we all, on a personal basis, we have our own families, our young children, and for us, it's personal that we do this. We're all very committed to making sure that we leave behind for our children a sustainable future. There you go, Cadiz. All right. Thank you so much for answering that question, Sir Vince. Uh, let me just check if we have questions already from our audience. But while waiting for that, uh, Sir Jerry, how about you? Do you have uh, anything to share on that question as well? Well, um, as, as Vince, uh, let me just uh, echo that um, as pioneers, we're able to navigate through this very complicated um, uh, permitting process. Um, you know, we've, we've had so many stories about this, uh, about difficulties in getting permits, having access to different agencies. But because of our background, uh, we're able to um, uh, navigate through those difficulties. The other part I'd like to highlight, uh, Cadiz, is really also on uh, access to financing. Uh, small as we are uh, when we started, but uh, over time we've been able to work and establish uh, trust and um, familiarity and confidence uh, by our from our lenders uh, because uh, we work with them, we explain, we are very diligent and we're patient in explaining the intricacies of our renewable energy, how it's done, and you know we work uh, we work with them step by step. So that's that's what we do uh, because we're focused. We 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 give that uh, effort uh, uh, to make sure that everyone understands and comfortable uh, in our projects. Cadiz, we could see there's a lot of questions already. Would you like us to help answer yes. them? All right. Yes. Let me just flash the first question, Sir Vince. Uh, anyone can take this question. All right. So Rain is asking. 
which renewable remains to be the most profitable for Alder, at least in the next three to five years? Kirohan, citizen. Well, um, you'd say that uh, at the moment, uh, based on our current portfolio, uh, Rain, uh, the the Kirohan project uh, would remain to be the profitable one because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the tariff there is up at 10 pesos and 36 centavos. The other one would be the uh, uh, a rooftop portfolio. Uh, I mentioned the tariff that we're getting there is around 12 to 14 pesos. Uh, but over time, um, on the other assets as well, uh, we expect the big contribution really in terms of uh, volume uh, would be the wind project, uh, particularly the Tanai project that uh, Vince um, discussed uh, lengthily earlier. So that would be a, a key project that uh, we uh, hope to complete uh, within the next three to five years. Okay, Cadiz, uh, so far we have got not gotten any serious, uh, none, not serious, not even a little one, uh, a collection a problem with any of our power plants. So we're getting, we're getting paid and uh, we're happy that we were there early to set up these projects um, and been receiving good cash flow since uh, 2015. That's a good take, sir, and that's a good thing, I guess, for you in terms of your cash flows or and it's good for the business as well but here i have noel meramonte's question what's the respective percentage share of each renewable in your portfolio we we actually have a slide for this uh earlier but what i can mention uh, i think there's a spaghetti chart uh, uh in vince's uh, presentation earlier uh, but what i can tell you is that at the beginning, uh, we're starting off with the smaller um, uh, stakes remaining. Um, uh, originally, we're developers of those projects, but as we started, we invite partners to come in and uh, we allow our shares or our, we, we sold down our share in those projects uh, that allowed us to have minority stake. But as part of our IPO pivot, um, the, we going forward, we expect that we will be maintaining or retaining a majority position in our projects such that we can consolidate these projects into uh, the holding company. So that's our goal. And uh, this IPO will help us uh, uh, maintain that or achieve that uh, goal uh, going forward. Noel, um, also uh, for our current portfolio that's in the prospectus, we are not allowed to include any non-binding letter of intent or a memorandum of understanding uh, for regulation. So the portfolio that we have shown you is what we have permits, but that portfolio, the majority of our portfolio currently is in wind. Uh, that's a significant part followed by solar. It doesn't mean that will be static. Uh, we are currently under discussions with other developers in solar and hydro. It may not even be one third, one third, one third, but what we're really trying to focus on is on the growth, how much megawatt or uh, sorry, uh, cash flow we could generate every year so that we could compound the growth of uh, the net income and earnings of Alternergy. Noel. Okay, next question. Right. I have a question here from Reagan Lobaton. Since you've been doing this for 15 years, how did you mitigate risks on your facilities or machines in case of natural disasters? Very good question. Um, so um, what we've done is uh, first is with the design. So we design our projects so that we are able to capture the type of risk that we expect. So as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, we work with world-renowned technical experts uh, to make sure that uh, they agree with our assessments and our evaluation and our design. So we do that uh, in the first, and then the construction of that is properly managed uh, and, and supervised as well. So um in terms of addressing this uh, this risk we believe that our design would be able to handle and uh, overcome these types of disasters i'll give you a, give a short example one is for the wind wind turbines uh they're designed generally to withstand 200 to 250 kilometers uh, uh per hour, per hour of, uh, wind speeds uh, the same goes for our solar projects are anywhere between 200 to 250 kph wind speeds so those that's the type of design that uh, we do uh, but then, if really uh, any rare events where, um, you know, uh, unexpected uh, type of uh, typhoon comes in, 
uh, we are covered. We make sure that our all our projects are covered with insurance. That's our ultimate uh, mitigant here, uh, so that we that these projects once they hit and they get damaged, then we have a way of recovering uh, right away uh, through this insurance uh, mitigation. Next question, Cadiz. Let me just flash it. Okay, uh, Tin Reina is asking, how much is your cash? OPEX per kilowatt hour for wind, hydro, and solar projects. Oh, uh, this, very uh, technical. This, we're, we're talking of OPEX here, no? Um, yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you that I think in in our in my presentation earlier, I've shown you that uh, we're for the group we're looking at at an EBITDA margin of eighty two percent. So what does that mean? Our our OPEX is actually very low. Uh, on a, on a, on a uh, regular basis, where the the expenses really come in is really on the on the upfront upfront uh, component where we build the project. It's the capex, because as I said, EBITDA margin of eight two percent. So you know, you look at the the tariff. Eight, if you have a tariff of ten pesos, then cap opex there would be around uh, uh, two pesos, uh, just to give you an idea. Um, so. Um, for us, it is the capex that really matters. If we're able to uh, handle that uh, well at the beginning, then um, opex is probably not a, a, a significant component of our cost structure. All right. Next Thank question. you for clarifying that. I have a question from Jason Camelo. As an observation, much of your projects are concentrated in Luzon and Visayas. Are there challenges in Mindanao that the company is having difficulties to initiate projects there? So, Jason, actually, one of our profitable projects are in northern Mindanao, the Kirohon in uh, Misamis Oriental. Second, uh, for our wind projects, wind is only predominantly in, in Luzon. That's why uh, we are only focusing on wind there. Uh, the wind in Mindanao, the resource is not very strong anymore because it's so far from the um, northeast monsoon wind. Solar would be good in Mindanao as we get closer to the equator. The issue though, Jason, is less of whether Mindanao is difficult or not. Currently, Mindanao has a power supply uh, oversupply. Mindanao has a power oversupply as we speak. Therefore, there is not much need for new projects there. And currently, the shortage is in Luzon. Therefore, that's why we're concentrating our projects in the Luzon grid. Simple as that, Jason. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And Noel Miramonte is asking, how about the lands? Are these rented, leased, or owned by Alternergy? Okay, I'll answer this quickly. Uh, for our solar uh, projects, we own the land. It is part of the uh, asset base of Alternergy. For our wind projects, we are leasing them. Uh, the Pililla, we have about 120 plus landowners. Some we have to buy. Mostly we lease on a 25 year uh, basis. For the hydro, we are primarily in what we call ancestral domain. These are the Dumagats, the uh, Tuwalis, the Ifugaos. And we cannot buy land from an ancestral domain. They belong to the indigenous people. What we do is we sign a MOA, a memorandum of uh, agreement with the uh, various tribes where we use their land and in exchange, we give them a piece of the royalty of what we earn. For every kilowatt hour, we give them a few X percent centavos. That's how we manage our land ownership. Noel. Thank you, Sir Vince. So just to give you an energy boost, Reagan said, thank you, sir. That's it, sir. I'm sold. So thank next you. Thank question. You uh, Joseph Poblete is asking, looking forward and as a pioneer in renewable energy companies, are there plans on exploring ocean or marine energy expansions? Okay, Joseph, this is a very common question or very popular in the Philippines. We'll answer it in two ways. One, our offshore wind will be obviously in between the islands of uh, between the zone in Visayas. Again, I told you the Mindanao, the wind has died pretty much as uh, weaker in Mindanao. It's too close to the equator. But there are certain channels between the various islands in the Visayas that are like wind corridors. Those are the areas we have pre-identified thanks to technology 
expertise we have uh, gotten from Shell, where that's why we have applied and been given, awarded by the DOE, wind service contracts in the windswept area of Calavite Passage. If you've been a diver and you go to Puerto Galera, you will notice when you cross the Verde Passage, it's pretty windy. Also between Mindoro and Panay, the channel is pretty windy there uh, near Boracay. So that's what we mean by ocean through the offshore wind. But I think you're asking for something else, which is what other form of ocean technology. There are wave energy, there's tidal energy, there's uh, current energy. These are all uh, potential in the Philippines, but currently the technology are not yet fully proven. We have had meetings with folks from Japan, from Norway, from uh, uh, Scandinavia, who have uh, what you call prototypes. And we told them like, if you could prove that your equipment will last more than a year or two or three years, let's take a look and let's develop it in the Philippines. But right now, most of the technology are relatively small, limited, uh, mainly in Northern Europe, but we think that could be something, but right now, no one has been able to show us an equipment that can last for 20 years. Joseph, maybe someday we might have an announcement in that area, but right now, nothing on our plate. All right. Thank you so much for being transparent with that, Sir Vince. Now, I will be taking the final two questions. So this is Job Gamboa's question. Are the companies under Alder already profitable? So Job, the operating projects under uh, Alternagy, the Kirahon, uh, Solar Farm, the Pililla Rizal Wind Farm, the eight to 10 rooftops are all profitable. All profitable with a margin of 80 plus percent, as Jerry had mentioned, cash flow, EBITDA margin. The others are projects under construction and we will know, and hopefully they will also be equally profitable once they come on stream. But certainly all the companies under Alternagy that are operating are very profitable. All right. Thank you so much for that. And the last question that we will take from Aaron Rake. Can you share if there have already been developments in the partnerships for your projects? Okay. Although I know this has been in some of your slides. Maybe highlight um, some of... Uh, just one or two favorites for you. Mm, okay. Uh, Jerry, you want to just highlight a few? Um, yeah. So just wanted to mention that um, the partnerships that we have been able to disclose uh, uh, is that one of uh, Shell uh, for the offshore project. So that's an early um, early uh, partnership that uh, we're having with them. So we're co-developing the, the offshore wind project with them. We've had other we've had other partnerships, as I mentioned earlier, uh, on our wind project uh, in Pililla Rizal. That's in partnership with Bina Energy. Um, in the solar project, we've had a partnership with uh, Minergy, uh, the the owner or the shareholder or affiliate of Sepalco, which is our off taker there in, in Cagayan de Oro. I'm not. We're not able to disclose anything. Uh, that are still ongoing. We have uh, a number of, as has been saluted to, we have a number of, of discussions uh, for potential partners or uh, equipment suppliers or what have you. Um, we're not able to disclose that at this point as they are still, you know, uh, being discussed. Um, maybe Aaron, I'll, because we are <laughs> got strict instructions from our lawyers, what we cannot say or say, maybe I'll answer it hypothetically and I hope you pick it up. When the government recently said that wind and solar uh, projects doesn't have to be any more uh, owned by a 60% by a Filipino, um, so one would imagine that several foreign companies would have approached a company like us, even though they know they could own 100% of a solar or wind project, but because they are new in the country, they wouldn't know how to go about the permitting process or who to borrow or who to talk to, which governor, which province is friendly. They would need somebody like us to be a partner. And I would imagine, Aaron, that since then, we would have had many discussions with them. But these are 
a hypothetical answer because we're constrained from what we can say by our lawyers. But I hope you understood what I'm trying to say. All right, Sir Vince. I'm sure they've all understood what you meant, Sir Vince. Uh, Sir Jerry, thank you very much. But before we wrap up, I'd like to call on Mr. Valentino Pagatsing. I think he would like to say a few words as final wrap up for our talk today. And we'll go one by one. So I'll start with Sir uh, Valentino. Uh, thank you, Karis. Just very quickly, um, I mean, we've heard a very comprehensive, intensive presentation from Jerry and Vince. Uh, but one thing I would like to point out, and I think it's not being highlighted enough, you can see their policy savvy as far as the regulations and navigating regulatory issues are concerned. But more importantly, you won't hear any declarations of you know, huge mega projects that might even cause, you know, grid instability. We have to remember we're 7,000 islands in this country. And a lot of those islands are being powered by diesel. You know, just read the papers now. What's happening in Mindoro is absolutely catastrophic. If each of these islands have the triple play formula, you know, installed in each of them, there'll be energy independent and at the same time clean. And then they can concentrate on attracting tourists without worrying about their diesel tanks bursting. So I think that's one thing that we really have to point out when looking at companies. And lastly, is the governance aspect. The World Banks, the Europeans, you know, the, all these conscience funds will not even pay any attention if they do not trust that you will be you know, good stewards of the environment and, you know, and stick to your word. One thing with these gentlemen is their high integrity. And I believe that with them, you're sure that what you see is what you get and what they declare in their work program is what will happen. That's it. Back to you, Cadiz. Okay, thank you, Sir Valentino. I like the term that you said, good stewards. That's, that's really um, the perfect term for that, especially since you're the Alter Energy is handling renewables and these are uh, energy that's just given to us and we need to take care of it, right? So um, now for the final words, uh, Sir Vince and Sir Jerry, what would you leave our audience with? I'm sure they've learned a lot already from you, but um, what would you want them to remember and to pick up out of everything that we've talked about today? Yeah, Cadiz, at this point, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time uh, out of your busy day today. Uh, and I hope that uh, we've been parted with you. Uh, the uh, uh, programs and uh, uh, plans that uh, we have in, in store for this for the next few years, uh, we are we can assure everyone that this team, Vince, myself, and the rest of the management team of Alter Energy will be working and we are committed to the, uh, working towards uh, delivering these uh, projects that uh, we have set in place. And hopefully you will join us in that journey uh, as co our fellow shareholders um, in Alter. Thank you, Sir Jerry. How about you, Sir Vance? Well, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Abacus uh, Securities for hosting us and to the team of My Trade with Cadiz and uh, Tine. And um, 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 and particularly Gail, um, you know, I've also been an investor like some of you um, in the past and um, done some well, some not always. But what I'd like you to consider is that Alternagy is something that might fit in your portfolio, not only because it's good for the environment, but because it might give you some capital appreciation where a growth story don't focus too much on the first year uh, earnings because the projects are coming on stream. Um, we've had young professionals want to have a piece of it because uh, they want to put it in their portfolio that they'll hang on for a few years. We have uh, grandparents and parents buying on behalf of their children and grandchildren. And Jerry and I, it's personal, together with my partners. Uh, Jerry has a six-year-old daughter, Carla, and I have a four-year-old daughter, Sienna, and some of us here have sons and daughters, and we're really doing this for them. Um, for us, uh, 
we don't want to be egotistical and build a very tall building and uh, see the put the word alternative there. We really, for us, if we could build, say, a wind farm, and maybe our children and grandchildren can say, hey, you know, I own a piece of that because I bought into Alternergy. I think that's really more the legacy that we're looking at. It's for the next generation, for the future. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for those parting words, Sir Vince and Sir Jerry. Now that we know your deep why, this is really the, the triple play renewable energy portfolio that you have is really for the next generation. Thank you so much for those parting words again, Sir Vince and Sir Jerry. I hope we get to see you again in a stream like this, maybe on a different setting or a different segment, but we really loved talking to you this afternoon. So for now, we'll say goodbye and we'll flash some few thank you questions, thank yous also from our audience. Uh, Joseph said, more power, energy. Uh, Sir Regan said, galing. Uh, thanks for the presentation from Chris Yao. Thank you, Alternergy from Gherkan D. Hermino. Now, I'll be putting you off screen, Sir Vince and Sir Jerry, and I hope I'll see you again next time. Bye! Uh -huh.